Okay, it's been a while since I made one of these and uh, hopefully I can take a walk around the bike and describe what's in it, what's on it, and kind of what I've done with it and it makes some sense. Right now the sun is shining on it so I'm getting a pretty good shadow on the front uh, but anyways we'll get started and I'll take it front to back and hopefully I won't forget anything and take some stills on some other uh, items of the bike and hopefully this makes some sense when all is, is said and done. But anyways it's a 2009 Harley Davidson FLTR Road Glide and I purchased this bike in November 2009 from the original owner who worked at a dealership and he had done some customizing on it before I got it. He had uh, added a set of Reinhardt mufflers, um, a Harley EFI uh, air cleaner kit, and a race tuner. He also added some bag liners, glove box liners, and uh, pretty much that was it. Uh, and the uh, four point docking station and the backrest that's currently on the bike. And then I got the bike home and decided, you know, like every Harley owner, that uh, there were some things that I wanted to do. So I'm going to start at the front and work my way back. And one of the things, the first things that I did is I put on this wind vest uh, light smoke windshield. It's got a little bit of a lip here at the top that flips the air up over your head. I'm 5'10" and uh, it comes down right about on the top of my helmet. It uh, sits somewhere between my chin and my nose on the bike so you look over the windshield not through it as you're supposed to and that really was a nice addition. Uh, one of the things also that I did shortly after getting it, uh, I had a bubble shield kind of like a 1980s car on the headlights. I removed that and that's the Screaming Eagle bezel. It definitely looks a lot more sporty. It's a high gloss uh, piece around the headlights. I also put in a brighter set of bulbs. They're only 10 watts brighter, but they put out a whole lot more uh, light on the road without blinding oncoming traffic. So that was really uh, a nice addition. As I started to put more miles on the bike, I really didn't like the bounce in the forks. Anybody that's had one of these Harley Touring bikes in a stock configuration knows that it's got a lot of nose dive when you brake and then that bounce back rebound can be disconcerting, especially if you've got a passenger or some luggage. And what I did is I installed a set of progressive monotube front fork cartridges in both sides. And I did a one inch drop. I got a 30 inseam leg and I really wanted to sit firmly uh, flat footed when the bike set a stop. Just gives you a lot more confidence uh, with the bike. I also uh, changed the fairing mounts to the 2010 style which raised it about three quarters of an inch and tilted the back up about a half inch and that allowed me to pick up a set of Harley Davidson uh, low in, lower fairings with the adjustable vent for your leg and I wanted to leave the lowers on all year and I really like the adjustability. So if it's cold or if you get into weather, you close them. Uh, it closes off a lot of the wind to your leg, but still lets the engine get plenty of air for proper cooling. And uh, there's some additional storage in the, in the top part of the compartment. Plus, I think they look good on the bike. Uh, I also changed the wheels. It had a fan style wheel on the bike when I got it and it was a 17 and I managed to source a set of new dealer takeoff 2010 street glide wheel wheels. Um, the bike has ABS. These wheels had the ABS bearing in there so it was a perfect swap over fit. Uh, installed those on the bike. It's an 18 on the front and a 16 on the back with the Harley Davidson rubber. Uh, I waited till about 15,000 miles before I put them on and uh, just couldn't pull off the original ones without wearing at least mostly through them. Uh, the bike also has the Brembo brake package. You get that when you get the ABS on this bike. So from the front the changes were the headlight bezel, brighter bulbs, the windshield, the fairing mounts uh, which allowed me to run uh, the lowers. Uh, the, those are the Electroglide style and again they came from Harley so the paint all matched 
hatches. It's really beautiful. And the Street Glide wheels. And I just did a front brake job on it. Uh, you know, the bike's got 25,700 roughly miles. I had the original pads in there and decided, hey, it's time to put some in. I put a set of centered pads in there. A little more aggressive than the stock pads that were in there. Um, only got about 100 miles on them. On my Kawasaki, it took about 300 before they really, um, you know, bedded in. But, you know, I can tell the difference almost immediately on the first ride. I don't know if it will show up, but I've got a Jag 10-roll oil cooler sitting under there. And it's right under the voltage regulator that's there. And living here in the south, that was something I wanted to put on the bike, you know, since I was going to be touring with the bike. Wanted to make sure, you know, that you get out on the road and you just have consistent performance. So um, that was really a nice addition. When I got this bike, it has the new six gallon uh, fuel tank. And what it did is it put your legs out a little wider. And I didn't like how much closer your, your legs were right up on the tank. And so I picked up a set of floorboard, <clears throat> floorboard extenders, three quarters of an inch. So I pushed the floorboards out just a little bit. You can see it's a little bit away from the, the pipe. But again, not too much, and uh, it made it much more comfortable. In fact, there was no need to put on highway pegs uh, when I ran uh, these floorboard extenders. The, H the Harley Davidson EFI air cleaner kit is behind what they call the football here, uh, so you can take a look at that. And I did put a set of fueling 525 cams in this bike. These are very mild cams. Come in at about uh, oh, about 2200 and run all the way up to five grand, a very linear cam. Um, runs pretty much just a little bit more than stock on the bottom and then runs it up through 5,000 without any trouble. Uh, this bike, when you're riding down the road on the highway, you're probably doing about 26, 2700 at 70 and three grand you're doing 80 and really how fast are you going to go without picking up a ticket so um, the bike really is suited for the way I intended to use it which is cruising and touring. Uh, the bike also has a dipstick with a temperature gauge in it and basically you don't even have to pull a stick I don't know if you can see it lighting up but it's in a blue LED and it's basically flashing right now 55 degrees that's about the temperature it is out here in the bright sunshine and it's telling me that the oil is cold. It takes the same battery as the faux bob and um, the battery usually lasts uh, about two to three years depending on how often you push the button but it's really nice to have on there. When the bike is on the side stand on the level you can look down and verify that you know your oil level and, and it's all good. I also added these plastic heat deflectors. Uh, these came on the touring bikes, uh, the, the ultras and um, Basically, the frame is the same, so I just picked up the hardware and picked up the parts from Harley and put them on, and it just, again, another thing that just helps deflect the heat off of your legs. Um, being the 2009 model, there is no catalytic converter, where if there was one, it would be right in here, uh, but uh, 09 didn't require that, so um, there isn't one on here. So this is the preferred head pipe. The person that I bought the bike from, he had put on the Rhine heart mufflers. Uh, they're really a nice touring muffler. They're not too loud and they allow you to hear the radio um, or whatever you're playing music, talk radio, whatever it is, right up to you know 80, 90 miles an hour if you really wanted to go that fast and hear it no problem. Cruising along the highway, um, you know, three-quarter or full-face helmet, no problem hearing the, the stereo. It's really pretty neat. It does have the six-speed gearbox in here and this is uh, I think the second year of the new style frame so it gives you a lot more stability plus allowed them to put a bigger back tire on the bike. As you can see the paint is black pe pearl and I'm kind of looking into the sunlight so we got pretty much shadow on this side when I move to the other side of the bike you're gonna see the gold flakes start to pop. I also changed it when I got home to a sundowner seat. I had that on another one of my Harleys and really liked the deep bucket. It just, you know, gives you a nice comfortable planted feel when you're when you're riding. The uh, backrest and the luggage rack were put on by the prior owner 
and uh, those are on the four point docking station. So you can remove the luggage rack and just have the backrest, remove the backrest, leave the luggage rack, or pull them both off. And it's just a click, matter of a few minutes to pull them off. When I rode solo, I would take the backrest off and just leave the luggage rack on because I like the look of that. So we're now coming around into the sun and hopefully it's picking up uh, some of the flake. There's a lot of glare on the camera, so I'm not sure I'm getting it, but uh, you know, you should start to get a look of how this bike really sparkles in the sunshine. Coming around to this side, and then we'll move forward again. You can see uh, the chrome sparkling. You can see the, the heat deflector and the paint hopefully starting to show up and uh, the lower fairing on this side again right in here is um, additional storage as there's storage uh, in the glove box and there's liners that are in here and then back around to the front now one of the things i did about a year and a half ago as I ordered a set of custom-made Olin's rear shocks. Kind of hard to see them with the bags in there, but uh, that really matched with the front. Uh, I got the 12-inch shocks as opposed to the 13 to match the drop in the, in the front end, so the bike is really, really comfortable and stable. I've got it set up for a 230-pound rider that's fully geared up and uh, the shocks are have springs in there that allow for up to a 145 pound uh, passenger so the bike is really set up to to be ridden with about 380 pounds of people and or gear uh, on it so definitely um, you know really really set just to go out and ride and enjoy I don't know if the tread in the back tire will show up. It's got about four and a half to 5,000 miles on it. Um, I did replace uh, both the front and the rear Street Glide wheels at 15,000, swapped them over. Um, but I picked up a nail uh, right near the edge of the sidewall. And when I took the wheel down to the dealer to have it looked at, they said, look, it's just not safe to, to plug or try to patch this thing, given the spot of it, and I just put a new tire on it. So this one here has got plenty of meat left in it. Uh, front uh, probably got five to 8,000 left on it, and this back probably has 10 to 12. Uh, this is a dual compound tire on the back, and it's got a harder compound in the middle for wear, and then a softer compound on the edges for uh, track so it's a pretty good compromise that they put together. Now just coming over the top, moving up to the cockpit, I did change the handlebars to the uh, heritage style bars. So they got a little more height and a little more pullback and just a lot more comfortable cruising. The, the bike does, in stock configuration was kind of more of a sport touring type scenario um, where it's now, I've got it set up for myself just for cruising and touring, but I've got the stock bar, stock seat, and very easy to put back to the stock uh, configuration, you know, if you so desire. I also changed the mirrors, and I think you can see that they come out just about to the bar end on both sides. These are heritage anniversary mirrors, and the stock, this part in here, is two inches longer than stock and what I wanted to do was push these mirrors out to the edge of the bars so that when I was riding whether it's two up or uh, solo uh, that I had plenty of, of unobstructed vision behind me just for safety you know anybody that's ridden motorcycles understands how people in cars don't pay a lot of attention and uh, especially when passing or changing lanes, you just want to make sure you got a good clear shot. I always look both ways, but you know, checking the mirrors constantly is, is really uh, something I like to do. This bike does have the security system uh, on it, and uh, basically you have to have the faux bob within eight feet of the bike uh, in order to be able to start it. Now, you can't start it and drive off, but if you are shut it off and don't uh, have the faux bob on you or within eight feet of the bike, you won't be able to restart it. Someone will have to bring it to you. So you'll just have to make sure that uh, you keep that in your pocket or leave it in the glove box uh, when you go riding. 
The bike also has cruise control. This is the first bike I ever had uh, with cruise, and you set it on this side here. And uh, I found it to be invaluable as far as any long distance touring goes. Allows you to you know, just to rest your right arm, not to have to have constantly hold the throttle. Uh, to shut it off, you tap either the front brake, the back, back brake, or just roll the throttle forward. It's got the throttle by wire, which is really a nice feature. Uh, another nice thing about this bike, it's got the self-canceling turn signal. So when you when you want the signal for a right turn, it's on this side, and for a left turn, it is on the opposite side. We got the horn lights, high-low beam on this side, and you get the audio controls uh, over on this side of the the bar. Uh, on this side, you've got the cruise control, and then the up and down mode for uh, scanning through the different modes on the sound system. You can shut off the speakers here uh, next to the ignition if you want. Um, I just leave them on. That button right here is to reset the uh, mileage on the speedometer here for the trip. So you got two trip modes that's available to you. I hope that you can see the blinking that shows you that the security system is active. Uh, on this side is an on off for the cruise so you can shut that off or leave it on and then an accessory mode if you have any accessory lights or anything like that um, that's on the bike. I currently don't. This is a dash with the uh, high beam uh, and different uh, uh, neutral light, oil, and it lets you know if the turn signals are on. So um, it's a nice uh, dash display. Very, very easy to read. You've got your stereo speakers uh, on this side, one on each side. On this side, you've got the fuel gauge. You've got the air temperature gauge. You, again, you've got the speedometer with um, the number six that lights up when you're in sixth gear. Uh, it also has a check engine light, a low fuel, a battery light, and the light that's blinking now. Hopefully, it, this is picking it up, and that's the alarm. Uh, system or the security system on this side is, is the TAC. It has the cruise control uh, and the ABS light. And when you start the bike until you put it in gear, the ABS flashes that it is ready to be activated, but until you put it in gear and let the clutch out, it will flash and then it will go out. Just uh, you know, another thing to let you know that it's on and it's working. You've got the oil pressure gauge and you've got the voltmeter. And just want to let you know, I just put a brand new battery in in November. Um, usually get about three years out of batteries on this bike. I, I don't like to, to let them get to the point where they're totally flat and problematic because then you put extra strain on the starter and the other electrical components. And you know, why put yourself through the, the unnecessary expense of uh, doing that? Batteries are cheap enough. It's a hundred bucks. You know, put the thing in three years, put another one in. Not a big deal. Um, also, it's got the Harman Kardon sound system, so it's AM, FM, CD, you put, load the CD in right here, and uh, then it's got an auxiliary. I either plug in uh, my iPhone with a 3.5 millimeter plug-in cable and just put the, the phone in the box with the wire kind of running down uh, the inside of the fairing, not a big deal, or an iPod or you can just listen to the radio or CD, whatever you like. And pretty much, um, that's it. The bike has always had uh, full synthetic oil. I've either used Amsol uh, 2050 or um, Redline uh, products. And always, no matter what oil is in there, a Harley-Davidson filter, and I always picked up the chrome ones. They're a couple bucks more, but you know, with a Harley, a little more chrome is always nice. There are bag liners or removable luggage in each of the bags. They're soft. They pull out. Uh, there's plenty of storage in there. This does have a cigarette lighter. I've tried it a couple of times, but I don't smoke, so the thing is in brand new condition. Uh, the bike really is in nice shape. And like I said, it's my bike and it's ready to go. So, um, you know, I just kind of keep up with it and make sure anytime I want to pull it out and go for a ride, it's good to go. Now, one thing I did do is I changed to a shorter kickstand. When I lowered the bike, uh, the stock stand helped the, had the bike sitting up too straight. And I really didn't like that. It was, it was fine if you were on a completely level surface, but if you get to a parking lot or someplace out by a restaurant and it's uneven, uh, you know, the bike was just too straight and if someone bumped it, it could tip. And uh, 
you know, this bike has never been over. You know, you can you can look at the underneath of the crash bars. There's not a scrap, a scratch or a scrape on them. There's nothing with the original levers and the grips, or no scratches on any of the chrome on the mufflers. So this bike has only been ridden by me and uh, maintained by me. So it's in really good shape. I uh, did add this little connection right here. So if you have heated gear, so if you've got heated gloves or heated uh, you know, foot inserts, uh, you know, to put in your in your boots. You can plug it in there and uh, run that. And then on this side here, I do have a plug-in for a battery tender. So if you want to plug it in and and uh, you know just let it trickle charge, you can go ahead and do that. Depending on how long you're going to let it sit. If I let, I'm going to let it sit more than a month or two, uh, I'll plug it in and let it trickle charge. Otherwise, it just fires right off. So uh, the next thing to do is uh, just to pull out the faux barb and start her up, so you can get a hear of what it's like. And just want to let you know, it's 55 degrees. The bike is stone cold. Everything is cold. Um, I don't know if my fingerprints are showing up when I'm touching it, but it basically uh, just letting you know that the engine is not warm. One of the things that always drives me nuts when you go to see something is you'll go up and see a car or a bike or whatever somebody's selling and it's all warmed up, ready to go, and you wonder, well, gee, you know, what's going to happen when I get home? What's that cold start going to be like? Is it going to smoke? Is it going to wrap? Um, you know, is it going to crank hard? You know, what is the deal? So this is probably, you know, uh, normally I don't ride when it's when it, this temperature here, but I'm pulling it out and uh, let's give her a try. And this is the faux bob that you've got to have. All right, it's got to be within eight feet of the bike. And uh, like I said, I just keep it in my pocket. It's got the key on there for the tank and for the lock. Uh, but you have to have this faux bob for the security to work. Turn the ignition on. Hopefully you heard the, the fuel pump prime. Now when you turn this on because of the power commander, the check engine light goes on for a second. As soon as that goes out, you're ready to just hit the start button and fire it up. So let's give her a try.
it up a little bit. Hopefully.